Hi, I'm Hans Slonum, and I am in New York in my studio and welcome you to the exhibition entitled Mantra, which has been painted during the last year. You enjoy it and know that this is what I've been doing all day, every day to make ready for you. <laughs> and um, thank you for coming to the show and my heartfelt um, apologies for not being there and um, a big hello to Dallas which I love very much. Mantra to me and to everybody, I mean, is about repeating a holy name over and over again. I use the Japa Mala when I do it, which is the Rudraksha beads that came from the tree that Buddha was enlightened under. And you just do an endless repetition when you get to the main bead, you turn it around. You never go, you never keep going in circles, you keep turning it around. And you repeat it 108 times, usually in traditional form. So it just to me represents the goal of life, the overcoming of the self, the my painting, I say mantras often when I'm making the strokes and the work with the back of the brush. And I repeat my subject matters a great deal. So it's had a huge impact on my life and my work as a painter. I think repetition is sacred. I don't think it's redundant, which is a lesser term for the same thing. I think that it's a way of taking in a subject matter, an intention, a higher purpose while I'm doing it. I like the idea of world without end. <laughs> so, and this is a way of, it's never too much, it's never overdone, it's, the more you do, the better it is, the higher the growth, year after year after year. Anyway, so I equate this, and it's becoming part of my painterly thought process. So it just kind of sums, there's certain keywords in my life kind of run the way I think and do things, and mantra is certainly a big part of it. Well, every subject matter that I tackle is very special and works on many levels for me. The butterflies or metamorphosis. I was a kid, my grandfather gave me cocoons, he would mail them to us and I would put them in my closet and I would come up from school and I would have like polyphemuses and cecropia moths flying around in my room that had hatched. So that experience completely impacted my vision and I never ceased to work with them. So they're, they're one of those great exciting moments in life when you really see nature at its most glorious and it's not often so it's a real amazing experience. The bunnies have entered my life. I mean, I had them as a kid. They've dotted everything magical and mystical and metaphysical throughout my life, especially Alice in Wonderland, the use of the rabbit and through the looking glass and down the rabbit hole and the Mad Hatter. And it's just had such a huge presence in our lives. All of these creatures have a consciousness and through my channelers and people that I do work with, we hear them speaking and talking and saying things and they're glad that I paint them. and. They said they would take me to places I wouldn't have reached without them, which has certainly been true. It just emerged in my work. Originally, I started putting them at the feet of the saints in the paintings that I was doing in the 70s. There were certain images of rabbits as groups that really appealed to me a great deal, and that's become more and more charged as the years have gone on. Um, they're also a symbol of luck and fertility among other things, really had a lot of effect on my work and it enabled me to 
experiment a great deal more in the mediums that I use because I'm not constantly struggling for the next subject matter. So I've been able to work with them and use diamond dust and metallic paints and every form of color that I hadn't really looked into before. But a lot of new, oh and now it's glass and bronze and mosaic. So the rabbits have led to a lot of change in my work, in the last few years especially. Um, the birds are in my work because I've lived with birds for 50 years and even earlier because I had them as a kid in Hawaii. I used to have a 40-foot aviary and I would paint with the birds as my companions and then I started painting them and then I started looking at how they were housed and there was a cross-hatched uh, mesh that they were hidden behind and that's how the lines came into my work and it added a lot helping me to relate to other artists who've worked in such forms. It was certainly a growing experience. There was a lot of aloneness. I was afraid to leave here. I'm just used to more interaction than I was able to have at that time. And it was a little rough, but you know, you get through it all and here we are. I just used to travel a great deal sometimes five times a month, and that has not continued. Just working harder than ever, really um, the basics and reevaluating what you really want to do and much more introspection and contemplation. What's next for you? If I knew, I would tell you <laughs> what's next for me. Um, well, my goal in life is always to do larger and larger scale projects, doing some 16 foot um, mosaic pieces. I'm doing hopefully um, some really large bronze pieces soon. Um, I haven't been painting enormous paintings lately, but I plan to start again doing really big paintings. I've done 100 foot painting. I don't know if I'll go that far, but um, just large scale, impactful things. I really feel like I'm at my best on a huge scale. And just exploring new media, 